Hi, welcome back to the workshop. A few months ago I did a video of an unboxing of this number three Stanley hand plane that I bought on eBay. In this video I'm going to show you my process of taking a rough but usable tool and turning it into a, a really, really good quality plane that will last a lifetime. Okay, so the jobs we've got to do are we need to check and flatten the sole to make sure that that's as, as flat as we can get it. It is fairly flat, but it could be better. The knob and the toe will need refinishing. They need stripping back and refinishing. They're horribly sticky and nasty. Um, the iron is slightly out of square, so we need to square that up and sharpen it. I want to check the chip breaker just to make sure that that's a nice fit to the iron. And I need to check that the frog fits nicely into the body and that there's no, no room for movement in that. Um, I also need to just tidy up the brass screws that hold the knob and the tote on. Okay, so let's get at it. So the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that the sole of the plane is flat. We need the iron in place to do this properly and we need to make sure that the, the lever cap is snapped down as it should be when you're using it. If it's not, it can affect the shape of the sole slightly, which will mean when it is in place, it won't be flat anymore. But obviously, we need to make sure that the blade is retracted before we do that, and it is in this case. Okay, so we know what we're shooting at. I'm simply just going to put some, some sharpie onto the sole and then take it to the flattest thing I've got and give it a bit of a sand. Now it doesn't really matter what you use to, to flatten the sole. Any surface you've got that's flat will do the job. The flattest thing I've got at the moment is the, the bed on my disc sander here. Um, and luckily this section is, is wide enough for a number three plane to go on. Okay, so I'm going to just use a sanding disc. This is an 80 grit just to start with, really just to see where we are in terms of flatness. Again, I'm just going to double check. The blade is fully retracted. We're not going to damage the iron. And I'm just going to give it a few passes. You can see for that, it's hitting in this area and it's hitting on the toe. But much of this is not getting touched. So there's a bit of work to do there. I'm not sure if you can see that from that angle, but that's literally two or three minutes sanding and it's taken, taken that down to a, a flat surface. What we'll do now is get some finer abrasive on and get that cleaned up to a nice finish. So as you can see there, I've just taken that through the grits. I've started at 80 grit with the rough pad and then I've worked my way through the grits to 400 which has left quite a nice finish on, on the sole. You sometimes see people spend ages and ages polishing the soles up to a, to a really high glossy finish. I don't see that's necessary. Um, 400 for me is absolutely fine. Right, so with that done, I'm just going to concentrate a little bit on the front there, on the toe, and on this section at the back, just to take away any sharp edges, so that when you're using it, you're not going to be dinging your work up, you're not going to be 
knocking these sharp edges into anything and causing more problems. For that, I'm literally, I'm just going to give them a very quick run over with a file. And then I'm just going to clean that up a bit more with a bit of 240 wet and dry. going to soften those edges so nice and smooth okay with that done now time to strip this thing down and start to work on the other bits So the next bit I'm going to tackle is to get the wooden parts into some kind of order. Um, I don't think it's going to take a lot to get this old stuff off. See if I can gently clamp it in the vise without cracking it. Try and be gentle with that. Okay. Now I'm simply going to have a go with the card scraper. See what that does. Wish I'd think in life was as easy as that. But be very careful, you can crack these quite easily. Well, it's not a big deal to make a new one. It's nice to have the original. is the original. So for this knob, quite easy, I'm just going to run it in the drill and sand off the finish. Okay, so this is sanded back to 240, it hasn't taken all of the stain out, um, not bothered about that. I'm just going to give it a quick coat of rosewood stain. So this tote's been sanded back to 220 grit. I'm just going to give it a couple of coats of rosewood stain. Once this stain had dried, I then gave both the knob and the tote about five or six coats of tongue oil. So the next bit I'm going to look at is how, how the frog sits in the body. Now as you can see, this frog contacts on four points, here, here, and these two in the front, and someone's painted them. So that's going to stop the frog from seating on there properly, could make it move a little bit, could introduce chatter when you're using the plane. So I'm going to quickly scrape them off, and then we're going to test to see how well it fits. And I'm just going to use the sharp point on this file to get that paint off. Right, so there is actually a little bit of rust on there, which is not great, but I don't think it's so much that it's going to be a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to mark these up with a sharpie. Okay, I'm going to put the frog in and just give it a bit of a wiggle and see what we get. Okay, 
as you can see there's some definite high spots there so I've got a little bit of work to do on that So what I've done there is I've just used the end of the, the file, there's a sharp point on there, there's a scraper, just to scrape those high points down a little bit, I'm going to black them up again. And I'm just going to give the frog another little wiggle in there. I don't know if you can see or not but that's taken most of the black off those contact spots so that is probably going to sit in there very nicely now okay so I'm just going to put that in loosely for now the way this works is there's two screws that hold the frog in place and there's an adjustment screw at the back there which moves the frog forwards and backwards the further forward you have it, in theory, the finer shaving you'll get. Okay, so with that done, we're waiting for the handles to dry so we can get some finish on them. I'm going to move our attention to the iron and the chip breaker. We'll start with the chip breaker. This face here of the chip breaker needs to sit really nicely against the back of the iron. You don't want a gap. If there's a gap, you'll get shavings jamming in there. And that's going to stop it working effectively. The job of this thing is, as it says, it's a chip breaker. As the wood comes up out of the plane, it forces it over and breaks the fibers. And with those broken fibers, it stops the wood tearing out, okay? For it to work properly, it needs to fit really well there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back to where I lapped the sole of the plane and I'm just going to lap that face there and make that nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be a mirror finish, but it wants to be quite nicely smooth. It needs to fit well against the iron. And what I'll also do is I'll clean up this face. It's a bit, a bit mucky, a bit damaged. We'll make that nice and smooth and that will just help as the shavings come out. We'll just find the angle. And clean it up. Take that to 400 grit, that's going to be plenty. Hopefully you can see there, there's no gap at all between the chip breaker and the iron. So the last little job we've got to do now is just to, um, just to sort out this iron, put an edge on it. Um, as I've mentioned before, it's not quite square, but you can see it's only got a single bevel on it. Now I always have a secondary bevel. So what I'm going to do, this will be ground at 25 degrees, I'm going to put a secondary bevel on at 30 degrees. It means I'm only going to be removing a very small bit of material to do that, but it will also mean I'll straighten the edge of the blade. Secondary to that, I'm also going to put some camber onto the corners of this iron very slight rounding off of the corners so that when it's in use it doesn't dig in. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a 240 grit water stone. So that's just been soaking for a few minutes so I'm just going to just make sure it's flat. It should be flat from the last use but I'll make sure it is. I'm just going to give it a quick rub with a 400 grit diamond plate. 
And what that's done is leveled the stone off completely now. You can, there's no wear from previous sharpenings, but it's also created a bit of a slurry and that helps with the sharpening process. So, I'm just going to set up now my trusty Veritas honing guide. And it is set to 30 degrees. Always worth a check. And I'm just going to start honing away. See, we're already a fair way there. Right, so I'm across with my secondary bevel all the way now and I can feel there's a very slight burr on the back of the iron. So, all I'm going to do now is just shift my weight into one corner and then the other. And that will have just given it a slight bit of camber, which is all you need. Definitely a bit of there. Okay. So now I'm going to repeat the process with an 800 stone. Okay, and now thousand and four thousand grit stone. Okay, as you see I didn't take a long time into that. Okay, so now we're at that stage, we can take this out of the guide. I'm just going to get my 800 grit. And with the iron flat on the stone, Give it a few strokes. That there is now gone. And I feel there's a good edge there. Okay, so we're almost done. So I'm going to go back to the thousand grit stone. Give that back a bit for polish. And then we're going to use the ruler trick. So we just place that little thin steel rule about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the stone. And then we're going to rest our blade on it. And we're just going to give it a couple of strokes up and down. And what that does is it puts a tiny, tiny little bevel on the back. Microscopic. It just means the whole back of that edge is absolutely spot on now. And then one final last step. Let's give it a good strop. Don't know how well you can see that in this camera, but it's a nice shiny finish to that edge now, and it is. Razor sharp, it will catch on a fingernail without any pressure at all. I'm not going to shave my hair on my arm, we all know it can do it. As you can see these screws have been quite badly chewed up. To fix them up, first thing I did was just use the hammer to tap the brass back down into place. Clean it up a little bit with a file. And then took some various grits of wet and dry paper to just clean and polish it up a little bit.
and just took it to the buffing wheel in my grill press and gave it that final polish. So there we are, there's all the steps taken to get this back to how it should be. So we'll just chuck it back together, set it up, see how it works. We'll start with the frog adjustment screw. I'm not going to tighten that all the way because we're going to come back to that and make sure it's in the right place. Okay, chuck the knobs on. Looking rather splendid. I think a much more suitable screwdriver. I'm not going to mark everything up. Now when you're doing this job, always do it at a right angle. So you make sure that you're not sliding your chip breaker anywhere near the edge that you've just spent ages polishing and sharpening. Now I'm setting this up as a smoother. So I'm going to set the chip breaker just a fraction away from the edge of the blade. And it wants to be even. It's probably about a millimeter. I'm just tying that down. Too tight. Well, this wants to be set so that you get a nice snap but you don't have to force it, so that's still too tight. That's too loose. So I'm just going to come back a quarter of a turn. That's good for me, I like that. Right, okay, so we need to adjust the, the frog now. Because as you can see, even with the blade extended, there's quite a big gap between the front of the blade and the mouth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the blade out. Going to back these off a little bit. And I'm just going to advance the frog. I'm going to go about half a turn. Tighten these back up. We'll refit the blade and see where we are. We'll probably do this a number of times before we get it where we want it. Still need to go forward a little bit. Okay, see what it can do then. So I've got a piece of maple in the vise. It's hard maple. So I'm just going to give the sole a little bit of wax. The iron's withdrawn, so we're just going to Advance it until we start to get a cut. Just starting. So we're going against the grain now. Flip it round. Thank you. 
And there we have it. That's a full shaving and I was putting virtually no pressure on at all. I'm just going to back the iron off, see if I can actually get it a little finer. Too fine. And there we go, nice wispy little shaving. And that is absolutely smooth, beautifully smooth. So there we have it, that's the process of taking a plane that's not in brilliant condition, bought relatively cheaply off eBay, and turning it into a really, really useful tool. Okay, well I hope you found that useful. Um, just run you through the kind of numbers on this. Um, the plane cost me around about £30 on eBay. I've spent possibly three or four pounds on, on sandpaper to get this done. Um, a few finishing products that I had lying around the workshop anyway. Um, if I had to have bought them, you're probably looking at less than 20 pounds on materials. And that's given me a plane that is every bit as good as a plane that you'd spend 150 pounds, 160 pounds on new. So yeah, well worth the effort in my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed that and you found it useful. If so, um, give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.